Coffee is far more than just caffeinated water. It's a complex chemical cocktail, a veritable treasure chest of hundreds of bioactive compounds. Of course, there's caffeine, the star everyone knows. But alongside it are powerful antioxidants, like chlorogenic acids. Think of these as your liver's personal bodyguards fending off cellular damage. Then you have diterpenes, like cafestol and coeol, and melanoidins all playing their part. It's like a super squad of beneficial molecules, often working in synergy, where their combined effect is even greater than the sum of their parts. One of the first clues scientists noticed was coffee's effect on liver enzymes. You know those blood tests your doctor sometimes orders? ALT, AST, GGT. These are like the liver's check engine lights. When they're elevated, it can signal that your liver is stressed or inflamed. Well, hold on to your mugs. Because a 2024 meta-analysis by Dolati and colleagues, published in the Journal of Research in Clinical Medicine, compiled data and found that regular coffee drinkers tended to have significantly lower levels of ALT and AST. We're talking an average drop of about 12.5 points for ALT and over 9 points for AST compared to non-drinkers. That's a tangible sign that coffee might be helping to keep the liver calmer and happier. Now let's venture into more serious territory. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, has become a silent epidemic worldwide. It's essentially when your liver starts storing too much fat, not due to alcohol, but often linked to diet and lifestyle. It's sneaky because it often shows no symptoms in the early stages. While the jury is still out on whether coffee flat out prevents you from getting NAFLD in the first place, where coffee really seems to step up is in potentially stopping NAFLD from getting worse. This brings us to a critical stage, liver fibrosis. Think of fibrosis as internal scarring. If liver irritants like NAFLD, viral hepatitis, or excessive alcohol persist, the liver's repair process can go into overdrive, leading to scar tissue too much, and the liver struggles. But here's where coffee drinkers might have a secret weapon. A major 2021 meta-analysis by Ebody and colleagues published in Nutrients looked at over 4,300 people with NAFLD. The results? Coffee consumption was linked to a stunning 35% decreased odds of having significant liver fibrosis. Imagine your daily brew acting as a shield against serious scarring, and here's where the plot thickens. Regular versus decaf. Decaf isn't without merit. Its non-caffeine compounds like chlorogenic acids show promise in animal studies for reducing liver fat and oxidative stress. So decaf might still offer some liver love. However, when it comes to battling advanced fibrosis, Caffeinated coffee seems to be the heavyweight champion. A landmark 2010 study by Modi and colleagues in hepatology found that higher caffeine intake from coffee, around 2.25 cups or more daily, was linked to dramatically lower rates of advanced fibrosis in chronic liver disease patients, especially those with hepatitis C. We're talking a potential 75% to 80% reduction in the odds of severe scarring. It seems caffeine has unique ways of interfering with scar-forming cells. So, while decaf supports, caffeinated coffee often leads the charge against fibrosis. If fibrosis isn't checked, it can lead to cirrhosis, a serious, often irreversible scarring where the liver truly struggles. Scary stuff. But even here, coffee offers a glimmer of hope. A 2015 meta-analysis by Liu and colleagues in PLOS-1 crunched data from 16 studies and found coffee drinkers had, on average, about a 39% lower risk of developing cirrhosis. Some findings are even more dramatic. Two cups a day potentially slashing cirrhosis odds by 44% and four cups by an incredible 65%. That's a game changer. And what about the ultimate fear? liver cancer, or HCC. The evidence linking coffee to a lower risk here is remarkably consistent. A comprehensive 2013 meta-analysis by Bravi and colleagues in clinical gastroenterology and hepatology found any coffee consumption was associated with an approximate 40% reduced risk of HCC. 
drink three or more cups a day, that risk reduction could jump to around 56%. A 2016 review by Wadawan and Anand further supports these powerful protective effects. Coffee, it seems, might just disrupt cancer's sinister pathways in the liver. So how much coffee for these amazing benefits? The science often points to a Goldilocks zone. Not too little, not too much. Around two to four cups per day. Remember that incredible statistic about death from chronic liver disease? A large 2015 study by Setiawan and colleagues, highlighted in a 2017 review, found just one cup a day linked to a 15% lower risk. Four cups? That risk plummeted by an astounding 71%. Now a quick reality check. Moderation is key. Too much coffee can bring unwanted jitters for some. And coffee isn't a magic potion to erase all unhealthy habits. It's a valuable player on your health team alongside a balanced diet and active lifestyle. The good news? Filtered, instant, or espresso. The benefits generally hold true. So let's boil it down. Your daily coffee could be helping keep liver enzymes healthier, fighting liver scarring, cutting your chances of cirrhosis, and even lowering your risk of liver cancer. Coffee, with its arsenal of compounds like caffeine and chlorogenic acids, isn't just a beverage. It's a natural concoction with tangible, multifaceted benefits for your liver. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That simple, enjoyable part of your day might be a proactive step towards better liver health. Research is always evolving, but the current picture is incredibly promising. So next time you savor that cup, smile knowing it might be doing a lot more good than you ever realized. Here's to your health, and here's to your hard-working liver.